My musical career started in Radio Shack. When I was 10 years old, I would walk in and I would play all of the keyboards until they told me to stop. And my parents, taking this as a sign that maybe I should stop getting kicked out of the Avalon Mall, um, got me a keyboard. It came with a book of sticky notes that you could stick on the keys and a book of Beatles melodies with the notes written inside of the actual notes. And one Christmas morning, I learned the melodies to Hey Jude and Yesterday. In the years that followed, my early teenage years, I had the, the typical series of interests and guilty pleasures. I loved Guns N' Roses and Metallica. I uh, went through a phase where I apparently loved bands that started with the letter B. Billy Joel, Bon Jovi, or the Canadian Bon Jovi, Brian Adams. <laughs> I then got into the songwriters, Springsteen, Cohen, Dylan, Lightfoot. I learned how to write a song. You'll notice in that brief bio that I didn't mention anything about Celtic traditional Newfoundland music. It's not that I don't enjoy that music. I have friends who are making a living making that music right now. It's just not something that I grew up with. And I think it begs the bigger question, what is Newfoundland music? Is it Newfoundland with a capital N, or as my friend Krista calls it, a capital accordion? Or is it something else? I write Newfoundland music, and I feel like I identify with it that way so strongly because I have a very strong sense of place here. And I think sense of place is really important in music. It gives it weight. When I hear Cohen, I hear Montreal. When I listen to Damien Rice, I'm in Dublin. And I think that that sense of place can manifest itself in, in different ways. Like in storytelling. In this first song that I'm going to play for you, um, which is called The House, it's from my latest record, The Evening Light, it doesn't have the traditional Newfoundland musical style or lyrical style, but it's a very Newfoundland story. It's a story about resettlement, especially during the middle 20th century here on the island, and about a couple who faced that resettlement and had to make hard decisions about moving on. As I stood in front of the house, as it kneeled in front of me, where the roof had sort of caved in, some nails were bared like teeth. And if the doorway was an eye, it held a crooked look of surprise that we had let it get so far down the line. Well, we move on, it's what we do, and we try to let go of all that we've held on to. Deep down a country road Where so few ever go The house kept a silent vigil For the ones it used to know But time it did its work Just like nature, like gravity And they slowly broke her spirit As they once did with you and me But luckily, we move on It's what we do Try to let go of all that we've held on to But as I stood in front of that house As it kneeled in front of me I could see in a broken frame The poverty of our youth Well it just went to our heads But I don't remember the hard times now I just remember the day you said We gotta move on It's what we gotta do And try to let go Of all that we've held on to Well we move on It's what we do 
try to let go of these things we hold on to. Thanks very much. I have a guitar wrangler. It's great. <laughs> so, storytelling is one way that I feel like having a sense of place can affect music, which I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, we're a story oriented people. But I think it can manifest in different, even more subtle ways than that. A sense of pride, humor, or frustration when our place is misunderstood or misrepresented. And that brings me to the other song that I'm going to play for you guys tonight called An Open Letter from the Island. Open Letter is a reaction song. It's a response to stereotypes that I've encountered as a Newfoundlander traveling abroad in Canada over the last several years of touring. And when you hear the song in a minute, you may identify very quickly those elements of place that seem obvious in the song, perhaps. But the truth is, maybe ironically, I didn't think about any of those things when I wrote the song. I didn't think about any of the things that I said about storytelling when I wrote The House either. I just wrote them both from the heart, from the gut. And I think that's what makes having a sense of place all the more honest. I think that Place is something that shapes you every day in small but vital ways, in ways that you can't think about because they just are. And I think that that sentiment, along with the sentiments expressed in this song, are sentiments that we can all understand and identify with universally uh, for any place that we call home. So a quick disclaimer. Um, in my travels around Canada, I have met some of the most wonderful, open-minded, warm-hearted, knowledgeable people that make me really proud to call Canada my home. And this song is not about any of those people. <laughs> I've also met some people who didn't quite get it, shall we say. And uh, I'll give you a couple of examples uh, to warm you up for this song. I was in St. John, New Brunswick a few years back a very intimate, loving, wonderful show. And halfway through, as I was tuning my guitar in the silence between songs, I heard this voice out of the darkness that shouted, Ian, you have the most lovely voice. And I said, wow, thank you so much. And then she immediately followed that with, I was expecting some toothless newfie singing eyes the buys that bills the buys, but you're awesome. And of course, my first thought was, it's eyes the buys that bills the boats, you idiot. <laughs> we can't build other buys. <laughs> that will be cloning. Yeah. <laughs> Though I think I will soon go into production for my Newfoundland science fiction movie, Eyes the Buys that Bills the Buys, about a cloning <laughs> facility in Green Bay. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, I was in Montreal. This guy came up to me, number one new fan, talked to me in such detail about the CDs I had and which song had this lyric. It was amazing. He talked for 10 minutes really pleasantly, and then all of a sudden, he looked at me and said, so, you're from Newfoundland, eh? Bet you got the hell out of there as fast as you could. And because I don't punch people, I thought maybe <laughs> I'll passive-aggressive him a little bit, you know, and I said, no, no, I still live there, you know, it's always have, it's my home, you know, home. You know, what do you say to the guy who insults your home? And he said, wow, I can't imagine living there. I said, have you ever been? He said, no, no. <laughs> but I heard that you ride polar bears there, is that true? 
And the answer to that question on that day, as it has ever been since, is yes. <laughs> There's an argument to be made for it, I think, you know? You just, you just give them a Coca-Cola and they go, you know? It's <laughs> great transportation. Safe property, people steal your car, they're not going to steal your polar bear, you know? <laughs> After enough of these, I felt I had to respond, which turned into this song, which I'll play for you now as my closing. And I think that it, in retrospect, has those things I mentioned, that sense of humor, that, that, that pride, that history that comes uh, from anybody who calls any place home. So thanks. <laughs> tell you a few things you may find hard to believe. I grew up with running water and access to TV. And I've never fished from a fishing boat, although I love the sea. Just a couple of things that you should know about me. I don't play the fiddle and I don't drink every day. These are all my original teeth and I pay my own way. That's for the lady in St. John. Someone asked me for an Irish song Cause they've all been overplayed It's not the music I come from anyway This island's in my blood I'm its biggest fan But it's a private love That so few understand And I'm not what you expected Since you didn't expect very much so I'm just here to put you and reality back in touch. I've got a university education. I've probably read more than you. It's funny you think we're backward. It's such a backward sort of view. But that we all just mess around. We were probably making fun of you. Just a couple more things I hate to tell you are true. Well, people ask me, where's your accent? And I try to be polite. Even when they can't pronounce Newfoundland right. And on Canada Day, when you celebrate, we mourn those who died selflessly. Now, Beaumont Hamill, so we can all live in this land of the free. This island's in my blood. I'm its biggest fan, but it's a private love that so few understand. And I'm not what you expected, since you didn't expect very much. So I'm just here to put you and reality back in touch. We were all born orphans here, we were all born without love. And so we learned how to love ourselves And we learned how to rise above So don't take this as patriotism Or as the words of a bitter man I just know who I am This island's in my blood I'm its biggest fan But it's a private love That so few understand not what you expected, since you didn't expect very much. So I'm just here to put you and reality back in touch. Thank you very much.